Oh, hey, <laughs> didn't see you there. <laughs> I'm Connor Barkley. <laughs> and it is with great pride that I sit in this chair next to this fire. It is with a little less pride that I'm here to present today The Beacon Files. As you know, Beacon is a film club that has been around for 30 years now, churning out film after film, much like how a fast food eater churns out his stomach. <laughs> but alas, the road to victory is often paved with thorns, and so mistakes, or bloopers if you're inbred, are often known to appear from time to time. But rather than getting rid of these clips like an unwanted child, Beacon has decided to keep these bastard clips and stick them around to make something new, something greater. We call them The Beacon Files. In it, you'll find a series of funnies, giggles, and all-around tomfoolery that takes place during a typical Beacon film set. Please enjoy the following clips, knowing that all forms of life were harmed during the making of this production. <laughs> Alter course, we must ret return to Earth and retrieve the fallen soldier. <laughs> no! <laughs> we'll do that again. There seems to be some sign of temporal discrepancy. They must be near one of the phenomenon. Do 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 Phenomenon. Fall apart! And I need you more tonight! And I need you more than ever! And we'll only hold me tight! And we're rolling on together! I think you make it once upon a time I was falling in love! Now I'm only falling apart! Nothing I can do! A total eclipse of the heart. Da, 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 da. Turn around, white boys. <laughs> okay. Could you submit terrible acts? <laughs> I cut. And cut, indeed. Welcome back, by the way. <laughs> Most of the clips you see here today will be from the sci-fi show The Adventures of Stephen Brown. Others will be from the dramatical series Doorstops. However, our next batch of clangers comes from a duo who should know better when filming Strawberry Fields. Now then, acting relies on teamwork. <coughs> <coughs> but when everything goes wrong, it's not often that you succumb to the giggles. <laughs> so the show is cancelled. Why? It's such a great eye concept, you know, it's such know. a great idea. Yeah, it was what? just cancelled. Nah. <laughs> just... I sought out a pretty good service for the old girl. And then I'm going to... Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry! <laughs> it's my fault, you shouldn't look at me. Yeah. Congratulations, you've hinged and bracketed. Fancy a cigarette? <laughs> yeah. The cancer was inoperable anyway. You're laughing about the you evil bastard, you I... wanted a dead. Zara is a cold planet. <laughs> Guys, please. Know your lines and Anna's this side of the thing and cool, let's go. Three, two, one, and ready, Sarah. Action! And we haven't moved a meter under our own steam sink. <laughs> <laughs> what is so funny? Right, I start on Sarah and pull out. <laughs> <laughs>
This is filming a beacon. <laughs> Such a charm. <laughs> Innuendos always bring John Leach and actress Jan Seymour to tears. <laughs> uh, finger, finger guns. Finger guns. Anyway, so I was doing a bit of research as what it causes people to lose the plot, and I suppose it could be a number of factors really. Staring down the barrel of a camera lens, knowing that there's nowhere to hide. The imposing boom pole looming over your neck like a noose at the gallows. Everybody staring at you, looking dead at your being, knowing that there is nowhere to hide. That nothing is true, everything is a lie, and that we are all insects writhing in our own filth in the eyes of the cosmos. But no, it's just a nasty case of the actors forgetting their lines over and over and over again. He lived his life. What are they going to put on his mic? Look, Rita. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, come on. It'd be great. We can rent a tent. Eat some cards. Buy some ice cream. <laughs> Hey, play some ice cream. <laughs> Should you do the games bits first? No. <laughs> no, you can't do my bits! No, no. <laughs> oh, come on! It'd be great! We can rent a tent, eat some cards, buy some... <laughs> Anything could happen. I could hit... Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> could hit Git. It was because she knew. Once she knew she was on a death sentence, that was it. She tried to make some life of this sense of it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is more than we can do with the script. I could get hit by a bus tomorrow. What's my gravestone going to say? <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, you are to attend the ceremony on Rupert for the whoop the the, the, the oh, bollocks. So. You want to know about Stephen Brown, do you? Groovy, no. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no. What are they going to put my graveyard? Graveyard. <laughs> 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 you can't work! <laughs> you yes, Mr. Lorney. Worse and worse indeed. However, Sometimes it's not an actor's fault when things go wrong. Oftentimes it's the actor's parents who convinced the poor lad he had talent. But no, sometimes other factors play into part. As Shakespeare once said, all the world's a stage and the men and women are merely players. Well, what he forgot to mention was that the props are players too. Except they're playing on easy mode and they don't have to do anything. Sometimes you have to pay a lot of money just for them to even be there. They're a lot like women, really. However, despite the fact that they have to do as much work as a Mexican family, sometimes they still manage to mess things up, like falling on actors, that sort of thing. Please enjoy the following clips and wonder how a lifeless object somehow still has more energy than most people. Cheers. <laughs> Jesus! Almost certainly. Because the script's just blown off. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, please. It's okay, it was a smack of delight. I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So can, I'm gonna do it. Just go, 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 board, go. Um, excuse me, who's working in the... <laughs> 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 What did you do? I dropped it. <laughs> the gun? Yeah, because obviously... You of all people. Yeah, I know. Every... 
Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> right. As soon as you roll the camera. Uh, look, would everyone just calm down? We're not burglars. And I think you can let them go now. <laughs> 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 That's fucking awful. <laughs> That's class. <laughs> Why do we? You just completely me? disappeared from my vision. <laughs> His video message. Uh, he looked like he was in trouble. He said he needed help. It looked like there was. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> sake. So I just stayed there. Okay. We should uh, keep a close eye on clients like Mr. Mackay. Oh. <laughs> 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 First thing to do is give the old girl a good service. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Give her a good service. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome back. I'm afraid this concludes part one of the Beacon Files. As you can see, you've caught me at a pretty awkward moment. My fire's going down, and rather than go out into the woods and chop down trees to fuel it like some savage. I'm gonna use money to get this thing going again. <laughs> There's more where this came from, I tell ya. Join me in part two, when I've got another fresh batch of bloopers for ya, and this fire will be roasting again. <laughs> I'll see you in a minute.